Hello, I'm Tim Shoebridge. Welcome to this video. The title of this video is rather vague. It's Capturing Ideas. And I've been wanting to do a video about this topic uh, for, for a very, very long time, but I've never really quite found the, the way of getting into the subject. Uh, capturing ideas is a concern or a problem for me uh, ever since I started to take composing music seriously. And to be honest with you, that was on the first occasion when someone came to me and said, please write me some music. And so I was actually going to get paid to do that. And ever since then, I've had this problem of how can I efficiently capture all the ideas that I get about music? You know, maybe most of them won't, won't lead to anything, but uh, some of them do. Um, and I've been trying to, you know, think about how I could put together a video and talk about this subject for a long time, um, and, and I failed to do so. But until now, because very, very recently, just last week, uh, Spectrasonics, Eric Persing of Spectrasonics, he announced a new feature in some of his software products, um, and that feature is called Flow Capture. Now, the idea behind Flow Capture is when you run his, let's say, Omnisphere, for example, in, in standalone mode on your computer, uh, there's a little record button there all the time. You can just turn it on and just record an idea, turn it off, and it will save some files for you. It'll save the an audio file of your performance. It'll save a MIDI file of your performance as well. And it'll also save whatever settings you had going on in Omnisphere. Uh, you might have taken a preset and twiddled around with it. Uh, those settings are going to be safe for you as well. And that's great. I mean, I, I like that idea. Um, but I don't think it's going to be an idea that's going to work for me. And I'll try and explain why that is. I think there are that there's, there's two ways that we end up with ideas about music that we want to write. We either have the idea in our head to begin with, and then we want to capture it. We want to get it down. Or we don't have an idea in our head and we interact with an instrument, whether it's a synthesizer, a keyboard, or a groove box, or a drum machine, whatever it is, we interact with it, we noodle around with it, and then ideas come out of that noodling, if you like. I think those are the main two ways that we end up with some sort of creative idea for a piece of music. Now, for me, 99% of the time, I have the ideas in my head, and I... I tend to get those ideas at the weirdest times. In fact, they're not the weirdest times. They're the times when I am the most relaxed, when I'm not worrying about anything, I'm not thinking about anything, I'm generally not doing anything. I'll get a melody in my head, or maybe it's a rhythm, or some idea will be in my head. I'll be almost like, you know, humming it to myself in my head. And, and this can happen, generally it happens <laughs> early in the morning. I'm kind of awake, uh, I look at my clock, I know I don't have to get up yet, uh, I'm relaxed, I'm not worrying about anything yet, or, or stressing about the day, and into my head may or may not pop an idea, a piece of music, and and I will want to remember that music, and I'll want to actually rush to a keyboard where I can try and play it and capture it. Uh, and when I say capture, I don't just mean the audio, from playing, I actually want to capture the MIDI notes as well because I want to then be able to work on it. Uh, because if I don't capture the MIDI and I've, all I've got is the audio, okay, that's better than nothing, but I've then got to sort of like reverse engineer, well, what actual notes was I playing and what, what the timings of those notes. So ideally for me, capturing that idea that's in my head is me very, very quickly getting to a, a, a keyboard that I can play that's got a sequencer on board. Um, and that sounds like a very simple, straightforward thing. Now, if I were to come down here to my, my little home studio that I've got here, I have literally got to switch on my controller keyboard, power up my computer, run up my door, switch on the, 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 the audio interface, the mixer, um, wait for all of that to come up to speed and work, and then, then I can play my idea, and trust me, I've forgotten my idea long before the door is up and running. Now, the Spectrasonics uh, flow capture idea means that you don't need to be running a door, but you still need to be running a computer. You still need to have a controller keyboard. You still need to have the software running and, and the audio interface running. 
Otherwise, the software is probably going to pop up some dialog boxes and ask you to choose stuff. And it's for me, it's not the right solution to my particular problem of trying to remember uh, what came into my head. And I know I'm not the I'm not I'm not the only person that has this issue. In fact, I'm just going to play you a little snippet from Eric Persing's uh, little introductory video to Flow Capture because he really does sort of crystallize the problem very succinctly. Hey there. I love playing, but sometimes it drives me crazy how many steps it can take just to record an idea. You know, you have to set up your DAW, you got to set up your interface, you have to deal with updates and compatibility, connectivity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I find that by the time it's all finally working, you can easily lose that idea, especially when you're in the zone and in that kind of special flow state, creative headspace. And this is something that has bugged me for a long time. And so I asked our team to make a special new recording feature in our standalone apps for Omnisphere, Keyscape, and Trillion to address this, and it's called Flow Capture. So there you go, Eric is mentioning having that idea in his head and trying to get it down as quickly uh, as possible before he forgets it. And, and that's my problem is actually in my attempts to try and get my ideas out of my head down into a sequencer basically so that I can record the MIDI as well as the audio. It's great to record the audio, but I really want to record the MIDI note data as well so they don't have to sort of reverse engineer what it was uh, that I captured in the first place. That's my ideal, and there's only a short time span between me having that idea in my head and me forgetting it. And if I have any complications around having to switch on a controller keyboard, boot up a computer, run up a door, or even a piece of software, uh, switch on my, uh, my interface, my audio interface here, my mixer, stick my headphones on, it, all of those things, just getting to the point where I can start to play uh, is is for me over and over again I lose that idea the idea comes into my head very very quickly but can equally quickly disappear again now I, I was watching uh, one of my favorite masterclasses I don't know if you've ever looked at masterclass masterclass.com there's some really fantastic masterclasses there by very very influential um, and talented people my favorite masterclass of all time is by Hans Zimmer and uh, he talks a lot about sort of the creative process. Uh, in fact, I would recommend, you know, even if you're not a film composer or a would-be film composer, if you just want to make music, I would highly, highly recommend that you watch his masterclass. I'm going to show you a little snippet of it in a minute, uh, which is a bit cheeky of me because it is not out there in the public domain. It's, it's a paid, you know, you have to pay to watch this. Uh, so I'm just going to show you a tiniest little snippet. Um, but this is his process of of putting down an idea um, into his into his door into his sequencer, he, he says this. So the way I write is I turn up in my room in the morning, and if I don't know what the tune is, I do it like this. I sit on my hands until I have an idea, and I don't let them stray to the keyboard because I know what's going to happen. It's just going to be muscle memory. It's just going to be the thing I did last week or whatever. So the most impossible part is not to touch the keyboard because it's so tempting to go and touch the keyboard and play a load of crap. I love the way he communicates. I love the way he talks. It's so direct. He's, he's very, very entertaining and incredibly good teacher. I really do strongly recommend you check out his masterclass. Um, I mean, what he's talking about there is muscle memory and the reason why he doesn't just sit down at a keyboard and noodle away at it because if you just sit down without an idea in your head and you just start to play, you're very likely going to play some, you know, chord sequences or melodies or, or you know, just, just fractures of a melody that you've played over and over again. It's just like, you know, this is what happens. We end up sort of levitating to the music that we play most frequently. In terms of like interacting and, and fiddling around with um, an instrument and, and noodling with it and, and getting ideas, I've over the years invested uh, money time and time again in trying out different things. Uh, a couple of my most re uh, recent acquisitions is this little box here, it's the, it's the Roland MC101 little groove box, uh, four, four voice groove box. It's, 
It's filled with the most amazing sounds. The sequencer is really straightforward and simple to use. It's a great way of getting ideas, um, but they're not the ones in my head. They are ones that I kind of create from scratch, and that's a different kind of thing for me. It's the ones in my head that I want to capture. And if I've got something in my head and I sit down with one of these and then try and you know, get a beat going or, or you know, try to use this keyboard, which is just one octave maximum, uh, in order to capture my ideas down, it's just not going to work for me. I've tried over and over again with this. I really love this. Uh, the fact that it's portable, battery powered, I can take it anywhere. It switches on quite quickly. Um, I like the fact that I can get ideas down on it, but they are not the ones in my head. They're ones that come out from interacting with it. And something else that I bought quite recently, a few months ago, in fact, one of these, an OP one, uh, I have resisted getting one of these ever since they came out on principle. The price alone uh, is crazy, ridiculous. Uh, I just thought so. Um, and ironically, when uh, Teenage Engineering uh, released uh, the, the field version, uh, the, the use prices of the original started to tumble. And I, I kind of wonder why that is, as to whether it's people selling off their old one in order to invest in a new one. No, I don't think so. I think it was people just selling off their old ones because they thought, uh-oh, the use price is, is going to start going down and they've kind of made it go down by, by selling all of theirs off. I mean, obviously we're in hard times right now. I don't blame anyone for selling off gear. Uh, it's it's whatever has to be. But I was able to pick this up for less than £600. 500 and, I can't remember how much I paid for it. 590 something like that. Which for me, it's still a lot of money for a little instrument like this. But I think it was... It was low enough for me to go to have a go with it and see what I thought of it. And uh, and I will give you my thoughts on this at some point. It's not going to be um, a classic review of this at all because there's, there's people that have done reviews of this over and over again. There's some amazing tutorials out there uh, by people that know this instrument inside and out. I've only had it a few months. Uh, I was going away on holiday for the first time in three years earlier this year and I bought it about a month before I went and I took it with me and I played with it and and it's an amazing ideas machine, don't get me wrong, it's, it's amazing actually. Uh, I was actually very, very impressed with many features about it. Um, but even though it's got a, a two octave keyboard here, it's not for me the ideas machine that I'm looking for to get something that's in my head down because this hasn't got a sequencer it's just got an audio recording which for me is just a real real missed opportunity it really is but uh, so this doesn't fit my needs either so I'm constantly looking for something that is not a computer um, it's not a groove box it's gonna have to have a keyboard I really would like it to be battery powered I'd really like it to be able to instantly switch on and have inside it a polyphonic sequencer so I can start to play my ideas, get them down with just some basic piano sounds, that's good enough, and capture. And I am constantly looking for that instrument. If you have an idea about an instrument like that um, that exists right now, please let me know in the comments. I'd really love to hear from you. And I'd love to hear from you about your experiences of, of capturing your ideas how does it work for you? Are they in your head? Do you create them from playing with your instruments and your and your gear? How do you capture those ideas? Because uh, for me, it is just a constant problem. Anyway, here's a little clip of me. Uh, I had an idea in my head and I started to noodle it on my piano. I happened to have the piano on. It was in the middle of the day, not the beginning of the day. It was in the middle of the day. Everything was powered up and ready to go. I actually had a moment to just take my camera that's behind me here, set it up here and just press record on it so I could actually capture me playing around on my piano um, and, and sort of like formulating that idea. And it was it was kind of a little bit, if you, if you know the film The Piano and the beautiful film score for it, uh, which is piano, uh, very rhythmical and gorgeous sounding piano uh, soundtrack. Um, my this is my <laughs> you could say this is my interpretation of it it's a little rhythmic but this piece of piano playing is got it's nothing like the piano film score at all um but it kind of reminded me of it at the time and i started to play it and i and i ended up writing a little piece of music off the back of it um and uh, i'll show you that now this is what i 
I've, I've come up with. This is kind of, for me, what I want to be able to achieve, but not in my studio. I want to be able to do it anywhere, on the train, on the toilet, <laughs> anywhere, in bed, you name it. I want to be able to get those ideas out of my head and into, into uh, an instrument. 